Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Thanks very much for clicking on this video. It is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna take you through my weekend sales. What has come through since I did the post last Friday afternoon? A total of 26 items have gone on to sell. Revenue of $1,035. We've got the fees of 155 bucks to take out, the postage of 197.50, and then the cost of goods that went on to sell, 192.50 as well. So guys, $489 has come through this weekend alone. Some awesome items to take you through. Remember to smash the like button if you get anything out of it. And if you're brand new to the channel and you wanna learn how to sell on eBay, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's get into the first category that we always like to jump into first, the shoes. So this was a pretty sweet result, guys. I've had a pair of Adidas Predator 20.1 Mutator men's footy boots come through. Now, these are a size US 12 and a half. I bought them out of the Adidas factory outlet only a couple of weeks ago. Put out a video on it if you want to learn about retail arbitrage. But these have ended up being purchased for $35. I got them at 70% off the recommended retail price. Whacked them up onto eBay and I've sold them in a pretty fast space of time for $149.95. Just an incredible result on a pair of footy boots bought out of the Adidas store. So retail arbitrage, absolutely love getting these sales come through. That's going to be an $80 profit when you take out fees and postage. So just an unbelievable get. Now, you may have remembered in Thursday's Trip to the Thrift episode, I bought these ASIC shoes. These are in the first op shop run of the day. I bought them for $15. As you can see there, the sticker's still in them. Um, they've ended up selling for $79.95. The reason they sell for such a high price is the condition. Have a look at them. They're pretty much hardly worn. So I've gone ahead and got a fantastic result here. We can take out fees and postage. It's ended up being a $45 profit. So a really fast sales cycle. We're talking about three days for these shoes. And I truly believe it was due to the fact that they were in such good condition. Next pair of shoes are the Nike Phantom Venom Elite. So I picked these up on Thursday, really fast sales cycle. I challenged you guys in that video to let me know whether you would cop or drop these boots for $35. That's what they were asking in the thrift. Now, resoundingly, you all told me to drop them. I went ahead and I picked them up anyway, and I've been able to profit myself $40. They've sold for $95 on eBay, and they sold in one hour as well. A really, really fast sales cycle. So it does come down to knowing your niche. I know my footy boots really well. Happy to grab these for 35 because I knew they would turn around for a pretty top dollar. And sure enough, 95 bucks. I was pretty happy. Think I need to buy a couple more bins as well because we're starting to overflow. Luckily, these are out the door, guys. These are a pair of Asics Exalt 2. Uh, women's running shoes. Now, they're a US size 11. The soles on them were pretty decent, and uh, I bought these for about $10 in the thrift a couple of months ago now, a slightly longer sales cycle for these ones, uh, but they've ended up selling for $58.95. Absolutely love selling my ASIC shoes. We've got another one out the door here. Um, condition, guys, make sure there's no fabric tears, make sure the soles have got some wear on them, and you'll be good to go with the ASICs brand. So, been able to profit a good $35 on these ones. Next pair of shoes is a pair of, again, women's shoes, US 7.5. These are the Under Armour Hover women's running shoes. So uh, plain white. I don't typically buy white shoes just for the fact that they do get dirty and stained pretty easily, but these have cleaned up all right in the wash. Uh, they've ended up selling for $45, and I actually used a loyalty card to redeem a free purchase on these shoes. So I actually didn't pay for it. So in the end, guys, I'm profiting around about 30 bucks on these. All right, the next two that I've got here are a pair of women's running shoes. We've got the Puma US size 7 and the big Bowlace Puma US size 7. So two pairs of women's running shoes. They have both gone on to sell for $40. So I've had them in my cupboard here in these boxes for a couple of months now. And for that reason, I was happy to take a slightly larger best offer. So I both had them up for 50 bucks a piece. And then throughout the weekend, offers came in around about the $40 price point. I couldn't say no. So nice to clear them both out. Women's shoes, US size 7. The brand is Puma. Definitely look out for them. And these were the other ones as well, uh, Calvin Klein jeans. So I wouldn't normally buy these shoes. The reason I did was because they were only $4. So a very cheap purchase price. The condition of them were excellent. And they've ended up selling for 35 bucks on a best offer. So happy to get this one done as well, considering it was slightly less than what I'd normally sell my shoes for. I'm normally selling these running type shoes, but um, canvas shoes, Calvin Klein, good brand, not a bad profit of about 20 bucks. Uh, that's everything for the shoes. We had seven pairs come through over the weekend. Let's go and have a look at the DVDs that sold. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you would see that these DVDs have been slowly whittling away over the last few weeks, so I may need to get on the Facebook Marketplace and buy a few more, but these were the DVDs that sold over the weekend. We had a total of seven that have come through, revenue of $97, 
So we're talking an average of about $13.50 per DVD. The two real winners of the weekend were these two right here. We've got Nightbreed, ended up going on to sell for $19.50. So any DVD over a $15 sale, I think, is some pretty good money. So Nightbreed, that was a good one. This one as well, $25 for Forbidden Planet. That just looks like a really cool DVD. If you saw that in the thrift, you'd be picking it up, wouldn't you? Uh, these ones as well, they were a little bit less. So we're talking sort of $10 to $15 a piece for all of those. But uh, two real winners there, 97 bucks overall. The DVDs, they are still trickling away for me. One of the biggest blunders or mistakes or lessons that I've learned over the last 12 months of reselling full-time was a really dodgy wholesale purchase that I made. Dodgy in the sense that I didn't get what I was anticipating was going to be coming to me. I bought a stack of wholesale jumpers, just hooded jumpers. I paid $1,600 and uh, I got about 150 of them. They weren't what I anticipated them to be, and they have been very slow movers on my eBay store ever since. Now, I've ended up selling three of them though, pleasingly, some good results here with these, uh, with this horrific wholesale purchase. These three jumpers, here's one here, Atlantic Track. Um, it was obviously by the same buyer. We've got Augustana Baseball there as well. So they were basically US sports-based hooded jumpers. Uh, and then the other one here, Auburn as well. So I got a sale for $78 for those three jumpers. Now it's going to cost about 18 bucks to post them off because I'll put them all into a very big satchel. Um, so about $18, I dare say. And um, that'll mean that they'll sell for 20 bucks each. Remember, I bought them for $11 each. So I'm not actually making too much money here. I'm almost just trying to get my money back. And these were all the best of the bunch out of what I got. So the best of the bunch is only getting my money back. And I've got a lot of other crap ones here as well. So I'm probably going to end up taking a loss on these. And it's just a lesson that I've learned. Know what you're getting before you commit to a wholesale purchase because you don't want to leave it up for assumption because you might be disappointed just like I was. There were just three other clothing items that were able to sell it. But these three right here, I'll start with this Denver Broncos t-shirt, size medium. I picked this one up for $3 in the op shop and it ended up selling for 28 bucks. But it was a really long sales cycle. No surprises that it's finally sold given the fact that the NFL season starts next week. Um, so to get 28 bucks for a $3 purchase, I thought that was pretty decent. Another US sporting base t-shirt. We've got the LA Angels baseball tee here. We've got a size medium on the Majestic tag as well. I only picked this one up for a couple of bucks in the thrift and it sold for $23.95. So uh, maybe a $10 profit at the end of the day on this one. I wouldn't always buy these items moving forward. The t-shirts don't generate a huge profit for me, but uh, I still just love buying this sort of stuff. So even just to have it in the cupboard, I don't mind it. So moving it on for $23.95 was a pretty decent result. And then the last one, geez, I'm happy to see this one out the door. I don't buy these shirts anymore. Tommy Hilfiger, double XL, classic fit, long sleeve business shirt. I don't know. Back when I first started reselling, I thought these were the bee's knees. I thought you had to get Tommy Hilfiger. Look, it doesn't. It just doesn't sell. I sold them for twenty two bucks. So I was really just trying to get some decent money back. I paid eight dollars for it in the thrift. Uh, sold it for twenty two. So what? That's maybe like five bucks worth of a profit. There's just no money in these things, guys, so I'm not buying them anymore. I'll tell you what does make you some pretty good money, though. The VHS players. And you might have remembered that I picked up this big guy a couple of weeks ago in a trip to the thrift episode. There were a couple of these VHSs that I was able to grab. This one cost me $35. Now, I've ended up going on to sell it in the space of two weeks for $150. Bucks. The beauty of this one is that it actually comes with the remote as well, which is what I, I always look for when I'm buying these VHS players. And so uh, it did all work completely fine. I plugged it in here when I got home and uh, the bloke at the op shop said that he always tests them out prior as well. So uh, good to go with this one. Bubble wrap butcher's paper into a box and uh, tape it up and out the door. This one's off to Tasmania. Should cost me about 20 bucks worth of postage after the Australia Post My Business discount. And that nets me a $75 profit. So the hard goods, the old school technology like the VHS players, my goodness, they do sell really well. Next one, I reckon I've underpriced these. Uh, they were the Quicksilver board shorts or casual shorts, I should say. More of a chino style, um, cargo short style short, but um, they were brand new with tags. That's why I bought them. I'm, I'm always looking for anything that is brand new. Um, I sold these for $25 and I actually think I underpriced them. I should have probably gone for about $35 on these um, just because they were brand new. But uh, look, nonetheless, they were only a few dollars and the thrift turned them into $25. Bucks. Very, very fast turnaround. So kind of happy with that. Can't complain. The next item was a piece of retail arbitrage that has backfired. Hasn't done too well for me. The Calvin Klein undies. I bought these for $17. I bought them for $17. 
because it had a uh, $60 Australian price tag on it. And I thought that 17 was a pretty good price difference to be able to profit me some dollar. But uh, in the end, these have not sold for too much. I think it was about $25. The screen grab here will let you know. But uh, I do think in the end, I actually just got my money back on these ones after post. Just had the one book as well. Just had the one book sale. Um, so this was the Fifty Shades uh, book series. So the trilogy, one, two, and three. This was actually a lady at the post office on consignment. I've got a bit of a deal going with her. I go in three times a week. I'll strike up a bit of a conversation, tell her what I do. And uh, she's given me a few items, this being one of them that she wants to get rid of. So um, it's sold for $27.95, I think, from memory. Um, so $27.95, the deal with her is that we do a 50-50% split. So um, take out fees and postage, whatever's left over, I get half, she gets half. And um, it's good for me because I don't need to buy items to get my hands on some decent stock. And she doesn't have to do any work in selling the item. Consignment is just such a great way to go about it, especially if you're a brand new reseller. You might not have a heap of dollar to put into buying items. Go and ask your friends and family for items. Ask the lady at the post office like I did. So look, to be honest, while we have had some pretty good return with that lady at the post office, this one here will just be a small one. It'll probably be about $8 each. I might give her a $10 note. I'll take a $6 profit for doing the work, but uh, we've had some pretty good results otherwise. But uh, a really cool sale there, another set of books. I am doing a couple of books every now and again, but like I said in multiple videos, I am slowly phasing out of the category. A pretty small sale, this one. This was a little Pokemon coffee mug that I picked up a very, very long time ago. I only paid a dollar for it in the thrift. Uh, I don't know if it's anything special, just a 2017 coffee mug. Um, got all of them on there, sold for $17.95. So I'll put this one into some bubble wrap and uh, give it a bit of a clean as well. Is that a spider in there? My goodness. Um, anyway, we'll get this one out and um, yeah, it'll probably be maybe a, I don't know, $5 to $10 profit. I don't typically buy these things. Twenty-six sales, over a thousand dollars worth of revenue. I was really happy with the weekend results. Hopefully, you got some value out of those twenty-six items. I did just re really quickly want to touch on just the setup that I've got there back at home. It's 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 really actually not a lot of expense to set it up. It, it's it's operating out of a spare bedroom. There's a second spare bedroom for storage, and uh, there was no real heavy outlay of money to set the business up. I mean, creating an eBay store, buying a few items, sure couple of hundred bucks there to get myself going and then maybe a couple of hundred bucks to set up the office space but there's not a lot of space that I'm using and there's not a lot of money that was initially used so I, I just really want to highlight the fact that you can set up a full functioning full-time eBay business doing six figures every year if you want to um, the only extra ingredient you're going to need in all of that is just a bit of hard work and I'm absolutely loving the process of documenting the journey but I really want to help and educate you guys out there that are beginning and if you're a beginning and you're enjoying the process, you're loving what you're doing, you can turn it into a full-time job if you want to. So I'll leave you with that and I'll leave you with a video that talks about my business expenses as well when I first started out, how much money I actually spent to set up my business, which I think could be something that's interesting for you guys. So I'll leave you with that one. Thanks for tuning into this one. We'll see you soon.